Ok, pues bueno. Entonces seguimos con la segunda parte del, del curso. Buenas tardes a todos. Gracias por volver. La última vez que he explicado las generales ideas de este flujo geométrico, sobre todo esto Alejandro de Kershaw-Pinto, sobre colas. Pero no he dado ningunos detalles de cómo se prueban las cosas. Y lo que quiero hacer es mañana explicar a ustedes sobre los ejemplos de las superficies donde se entiende muy bien. Vamos los resultados que pudimos, que pudimos encontrar y cómo se prueban. Pero por eso hoy día necesito que introducir las, los herramientas técnicos de, uh, que me voy a necesitar. Entonces, hoy día será bastante más técnico que, la, que el lunes y mañana será mucho más geométrico como mezclando la técnica y la, y la intuición geométrica. Y, entonces, vamos. I'm going to speak all around these hours about parabolic equations and maximum principles which are the main tools we need for these geometry flips. So let me recall the idea. We want to start with, let's say, a surface. Which might be kind of strange. And deform it. One is constant curvature. And the general idea is deform it following the directions of the curvature. So you should keep this picture in mind because. Now I'm going to do geometric analysis and there will be much more computation than pictures. So, the, the original I of parabolic is what is called heat equation. So if you have some compact domain in R3, so let's imagine other guys just this classroom, okay? The temperature Let me write big T of the temperature. And it evolves for the the flow. Following this equation, which most of you may know. The relation of the temperature with respect to T is the sum of the second order derivative of the temperature. So the 
hay estar así ¿no? y hay que ver y hay que ver que es ahí y son bifes por ejemplo these four which relates the evolution in time with space derivative so this is called an evolution PD and this general form will be the same one we will encounter for geometric steps and why will it be the same one? well, imagine the physical idea you can have about evolution of temperature if you start at time zero with some temperature which is kind of strangely uh, with a strange distribution you know that well, when it's hot the temperature is going to go down and when it's cold it's going to go up and just to smoothen something like that until it came rather constant okay? so you see that this is kind of a similar idea to the one we want to have to, to study for the geometry theory. So. Let me give you a more general definition than this one. second order derivative with some coefficients plus some lower order terms which only depends on the function as derivative and the position of time. Okay. So, the second order part is linear and this one may not so this is a second order PT and to be parallelic it is conditional A
So, positive and definite, I believe all of you know what it means. A way which is convenient to express it in this case is by saying that for any side in Rn and for all x we are taking the sum of a a j this will be specific. So basic example. If your matrix is just the identity Let's say by 3D So if you plug it in there You have DF Which is So, I will not give you all the details of the theory of parabolic P because this has a very long story and um, it's very long to explain but just the main result we will need for the rest of it. So, the first important theorem is that you can solve this equation. shown by Fourier not more than a century ago. If you start with some function which only depends on the space So by smooth you mean C infinity? Right? Yeah. Then the, the probability equation So the 
simplest one is to impose that your function is vanishing on the boundary, but you can change this condition and the theorem stays valid. So you have an initial condition, boundary condition, and an equation. And it has a solution. At least for some small time.
So I compute f of x as derivative here, I take a norm, I take the sum of all points and the maximum of all the order. That's norm of order. And the theorem, I want to tell you the following.
So by that you mean in the in the zero norm for k equals to zero. Right. So just look at the difference between the limits and your function, and this is going to zero. And if you have this, then also all the derivative converges to the derivative of the limit. In particular for us, we are going to have a flow which modifies the metric of the surface. If it converges to something, then the curvatures, because the curvature are the same on all the metric of the metric, the curvature will also converge. So this will be of key point. Okay. So basically this is all you have to know about the general theory of parabolic P. And now we will go to a special class of PD. to 
constant, which are positive, and another one which is negative. So keep in mind that this F is going to be the temperature in the room or my curvature in my geometry phase. So image that at time zero, F is less than zero. On the boundary, at any time, The temperature of your function is also less than And a condition which is something that more or less being smaller than the heat equation, which I'm going to write now, for all points such that. At this point, F is between C and C plus A now. At all these points, so again here, omega was a domain in Rn. Yeah. Okay. At all these points, we have. Inequality, which is very similar to the equation I want to look at. Basically, it's just a control on the second term. Okay? And the conclusion is that for all time and all point of space. The function is smaller than this. So once again, what is the intuition of that? It's just that the temperature will not go, will not go higher than the maximum it has at the beginning or on the boundary. If you if you hit by the boundary, you get compressed. But if you have a temperature which is fixed on the boundary, on a maximum, then your temperature cannot go further. Who's this theorem by originally? Absolutely no idea. <laughs> so, uh, no, I'm sure that, for instance, it's it was published in the, the same form in the book by Adama, which is more or less 1910, which is one of the First, com quite complete treats on PD. It only deals with PD or for analytic functions, but still has a lot of tools. And um, as you see, it's quite old. And since it was published in this book, I read it's older, but I don't know. And the one that is called Yao's maximum principle, that's a different one. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, that's a more sophisticated one for many methods. So, Let's prove that. So the first key remark is that if 
you have a function just in this case, which has a maximum in some point which is inside omega, then the Laplacian. at x is negative. So this is quite clear. Remember that the Laplacian is a sum of second derivative. So if you have a local maximum, the second derivative is negative. So, so you take the you add all directions, it will be negative. Okay? It's not so now, let us go for something slightly more tricky. Assume that you have a function which depends both on the space and the time. Smooth. Which satisfies the following inequalities. Uh, sorry, the well, question is positive with, with my sign. It's because I put in a minor there. So, which satisfies? maximum is reached, it's been that this has to be positive. You have f had to go back to reach this value. Minus 
So here you have a distribution. Okay. So the problem with this lemma is that usually this assumption is too strong. In the real world, you don't find this assumption. You have something with some large input. So you have to do some improvement. So well, let's go back to the theorem. So I will tell you that we assume two things. That f is less than this constant on the initial condition and the boundary. And that if f at some point were between c and c plus theta, then the derivation of f satisfies the following equation. That's it. Now we introduce for all epsilon which is between the zero and the value which you will see why it appears. So epsilon is some positive number smaller than this. V epsilon to be f of x c minus c. So at the end I want to show that this is positive. Minus epsilon 1 plus t. What I'm going to show now So assume at some point the epsilon of x t is strictly positive. Since it is smooth, there exists a minimal point. So let 
x0 t0 b point where v vanishes and t0 the first time. strictly positive, since at the beginning it was negative, it will mean that you, V epsilon will have to cross somewhere, so T0 will not be minimum. Okay? So the lab actually at x0, T0 is positive. And if you remember the expression for V epsilon, this part does not depend on the space. So the lab fashion of V epsilon is the same as the lab fashion of F. So now what do we know? There we know that g f of g2 is more than epsilon. By assumption b we know that this is less than minus a log machine of f. So at x0, t0, less than minus a log machine of f, x0, t0. And this is This is not possible. So this shows that F is less than C plus epsilon 1 plus T for all epsilon. So since this is valid for all epsilon, more than that. This goes to zero, so this is better. So this finishes the proof of this maximum principle. Using this trick of this function v epsilon, so that you start with a large inequality and at the end you have a strict inequality which you can use. Okay? So now I have explained you what is the maximum principle on Rn with the Laplacian, and we're going to use it on many things. 
on one surface. So now I'm going to skip from analysis on RN to analysis on metals. So you take the first derivative of f, you multiply by the determinant, the derivative a second time, and you divide by the determinant, you add all this, and you put a sign minus. So this is the expression. It's kind of hard to use, and when you can avoid using it, it's much better. Uh, something which is much more understandable. So if in these coordinates, you have a point which is given by the center of these coordinates. And The 
vector field given by derivative along the coordinates being some orthonormal basis. So this means that you have well chosen your coordinate for this very point. And what happens there? Well, at this very point, P, the matrix is just the identity. So the determinant there is 1. So your alpha sheet will just be minus the sum of the second derivative plus some other terms but which are not of order 2, which are of lower order. So you see that it is very similar to the Laplacian we have already studied. Instead of being in the domain of Ra, I'm on my manifold. Um, I have replaced the Euclidean Laplacian by this new one. And all the theorems which we've seen before are valid. But my manifold, when I mean my manifold is compact, there is no boundary. So I have no boundary condition. So basically, I can restate the previous theorem. If you have a continuous function, let me call that function two, then there is a simplicity of a unique solution to this equation. Just state the two maximum principles. You have question. Yeah, just one question. So M has to be compact in order. For right. Time. So if M is not compact, for this very equation, you you will find a solution, but it might not be unique. And if you want to have unicity, uniqueness of your solution, you have to impose that your solution don't explode at infinity because if you allow your solution to explode at infinity then you can have several in particular this phenomenon which is known even if you look at the heat on the plane you imagine you start with some heat distribution on the plane and you look at the temperature evolve a priori the physics will say that there is a unique solution but what happens mathematically is that you have a unique solution which stays bounded at infinity but you can have other solution which explodes very fast at infinity and then since it explodes at infinity it starts exploding inside 
these are not physically realist, but it's for the for the equation times. Um, so let me say it's I will not prove them because the proof is exactly the same I have done before. So first the maximum principle who is variable metric well there's a kind of subtlety which will be that we'll start with the surface and we will deform it so the metric along the deformation will change ¿Tiene alguna pregunta para la semana? Pues con confianza, cualquier cosa que, que, que duda, sugerencia, comentario.
Bueno, le agradecemos una vez más.